COVID-19 has proved that the microbes can strike back at any point. Currently, I run something called NewsClick, newsclick.in, and by all my life, actually, I've been an engineer and a science activist. This has been treated very much on the mode of what the colonial administration did under conditions of epidemic, basically looking on it, at it as a law and order problem. They have used what's called the, the Disaster Management Act. So the entire power has been centralized. And then we are seeing the so-called stimulus is almost entirely directed at big capital bailing them out. So if that is the situation we are in, the key issue is really public health that has to be brought to the foreground. And it's very clear now, if you take the developed countries who claim that they were the best prepared for the pandemic, today seem to be in the worst condition. Now that has shown up that everybody is in the same boat. What do you think are the most dramatic things you're facing in India? We are seeing a complete destruction of the working class in terms of both the immediate sustenance they have, the support from the government is very, very weak, particularly for the workers. And we have a huge migrant community, which are really workers who have come from different parts of the country to urban areas, who are going back to the villages because they can't sustain themselves. And the moment for them, surviving is the key issue. And if they die of hunger, they're not going to think of COVID-19. India has been very self-reliant and productive of medicines in the past. Can you talk about the ups and downs of the Indian public medicine system and how it is being affected right now? You see, the Indian pharmaceutical industry was really built on the kind of patent act we brought in in 1970 and that allowed us to do away with product patents and do process patents. Product is essentially the chemical compound that is produced as a medicine, while the process pet patent essentially says any process to produce the, that particular compound, that you can patent, but you cannot patent the end goal, which is the chemical molecule. So it's essentially we did not give any patents from 71 onwards for the molecule, but gave it only for the processes that produce that molecule. Now, this is something, as I said, European countries also did. But in the 60s, they went back and said, OK, now we have got good industries. We did the patent protection against other countries. So they pushed for the patenting system to become worldwide. India resisted, but unfortunately, India also accepted the patent regime that was being proposed. So a lot of the medicines that you talk about, even the hydrochloroquine, even the antiretrovirals, which are being now used against COVID-19, those actually are out of patents in India. So we are okay on those counts. We can, even under conditions of pandemics, export it to any part of the world. The question is, there must be a political will to use them. And the key issue that's going to come up is the Remdesivir issue, which is a Gilead patent at the moment. And then, of course, you also have the vaccines, which is also proving to be a battleground between different countries and different formations. So we don't really know what's going to happen with either vaccines or medicines like Remdesivir whether it will get patent protected for the world. I think under current conditions, it will be very difficult for countries around the world not to use compulsory licensing if then the severe really proves useful or any other drug for that, that matters. And particularly also the vaccine issue. So I think this is going to shape up as the next big battle. And, you know, it took for AIDS activists something like eight to 10 years because they could get access to Indian cheap AIDS drugs. So we also need to move fast to see that we don't get into that situation.